everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, uh, welcome again to our Shields Live on Thursday, another beautiful day on in May here. Um, yeah, just wanted to say hey, and um, today's going to be a really, really good uh, demo. It's on the BQ2500, one of my favorite machines. Uh, it's one that I use if I do any kind of sewing at all. Uh, just love that it's got the larger throat, it's got the move it foot, um, obviously the, the needle threader, things like that, but it's a wonderful, wonderful machine. So, uh, you're in for a real treat. Um, also, uh, with things, uh, I'm going to try something, uh, I think starting next week, Jan doesn't even know about this, but I think we're gonna do a little floor model sale. So anything that's on the floor, we will have it marked down. Um, but, uh, that will be starting on, uh, I'll probably do pricing and stuff over the weekend. So Monday, so um, we got that going on, but otherwise, uh, again, thanks for joining us and sharing and commenting and things like that. And uh, I'll let Jan take it away. So thanks, have a great Jim. weekend, everybody. See you. Thanks, Jim. All right. So let's see here. Let me get these. Uh, I got to get all the buttons done here. Okay, here we go. So we're going to talk about the Brother BQ. Um, BQ 2500. So there's two bigger machines um, that brother has that are, you know, we talked about the um, Presto some time ago, the BQ 1350, the 950 last week, the um, PS 700. And those are all in the same um, series that the, the, it's the PS 500 Presto the PS 700, the 950, and the 1350 are all kind of in the same um, series of machines. And they're kind of the medium-sized bodies now. Um, and then they made these this new set of uh, machines that are the larger bodied ones. So it's the BQ 2500, which is what I have in stock. And then we'll do the, the other one later. There's one called the BQ 3100. And it's really cool because it also has laser light technology in it. It has the laser light and a pen feature and some stuff. So I don't happen to have that one in stock right now because we sold the last ones we had. So we will do that one later so that we can um, we can also see that machine. But I wanted to do the, the this 2500. The 2500 is so cool because it's got some extra things on it over the machines we did last week and the 1350 that we've done in the past. Um, oops, second here. I just dropped my cap on the floor. So, um, but it has a nice, really nice needle threader. It has an extra motor for the, for the bobbin winder um, and that kind of thing. So we're just going to talk about this machine and some of the extra things it has. I'm going to show you the move it foot. So it has a better, it has a better walking foot. It isn't mechanical. It's actually electronic. So there's a bunch of really cool things about this machine too. So, all right, let me get my camera switched over here and we will talk about this beautiful machine. All right, there we go. All right, let me get you switch, switched over so I can see what I'm doing. All right, all right. So this is the BQ 2500. Give me a second, my table's just a little too close to mine. Okay, so this is the BQ 2500. So it's going to look a lot different than the machines we had we've been looking at the last couple weeks because this one has touch screen. So that's like a big, huge thing, right? This one has a touch screen on it. The other thing it has is an automated needle threader. So there's a button here instead of the little lever that's on the side that we push down over here, there is a button to press for the needle threader. So this is a really cool thing. It still has speed control, of course, has the foot up and down button, which the 1350 has. I haven't shown you that one in this series because I had already done it before. So if you're looking for a machine that's like the step down from this one. Go watch the Shields live video um, called the BQ 1350. because that's, that's, that's the one that's just below this one. So it had the, the, the foot up and down. So this, is, this one's got a foot up and down, needle up and down, you know, all that. So this one's got a few extra fun things on it, okay? So let's start with, let's, I, I like to start with some basic stuff so that everybody, you know, knows that it's, it is a little different than the other machines. So we're going to wind some bobbins. Okay, we're going to wind a bobbin and then we're going to, um, so this one, and we'll talk about the accessories that come with it because it has some nice accessories. So this one has, this is the first machine that has a separate motor on it for the sewing machines anyway, for the bobbin winder. So I can wind bobbins 
and sew at the same time. So there's a separate motor up here, so that's really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wind a bobbin. And this one's a little different. So this one gives you a little, a little spool pin up here instead of down here, it gives you a second one. It also comes with a thread stand and we've talked about some of these too. So this one comes with a thread stand. So I'm gonna pull this back um, like this. And I'm gonna put this on right now because I don't like to lay my threads down. So I'm actually, I just wanted to show you where that thread spool was. But we're, I'm gonna talk about the thread stand. I like putting these on. So to do this, it's really easy. This comes with the machine. I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit so you can see. So here's this lid, okay? And I've got a little light up here. So I'm just gonna tip the light back for a minute. And this lid right here, all you do to take this off, and if you have one of these and the 3100, this is, and then you can also get thread stands. Like I said, uh, the, the 950 last week comes with one um, and the 1350 also does. So I like to just put my thread stand on all the time, but this one has a lid, okay? And I can, this one just pulls off. So you just pull it up like this. It has these little things and there's three spots that it goes in. So I'm just gonna pull that off. And I'm gonna put my thread stand up here because I like to put my thread up on my thread stand. And these go in those same little openings over here. So it just drops down. Oops, I gotta stand up so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Like that, this drops in. And then I'm just gonna pull my little tower, you know, the little, the little tower up. Okay, and then it's gonna go over, over the thread's gonna go over that. So I'll put my, my uh, light back down here. This helps a little bit with the lighting back here. It's kind of dark, so, all right. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to lay this up here. I like to put them up here on the thread stand and I, I hardly ever lay any thread down. Um, I do lay thread, um, my monofilament, but the regular thread I like to do, and I can wind bobbins off of the thread stand as well. So here's my thread on my thread stand, okay? And I'm going to run this down and then on this machine, this is when I, when I wind bobbins, you can see the little lines here probably, okay? So I'm gonna go through this little metal this little metal catch. And then this one has a different type of button on it for the tension for the bobbin. So I'm gonna go from the front to the back. It's gonna crisscross it from front to back. And you can kind of see this, this is gonna get a little closer right here. Can you see how you it kind of comes from here across from the front to the back and then goes this way. And then we're gonna go across to the bobbin winder. This one has a little different bobbin winder on it than the last machines we've done. Okay. And I'm going to just, I'm going to wrap it around the bobbin maybe six or seven times and I'm going to cut it off. Okay. Same way as the other machine. And then I'm going to flip the little flipper in like this. Now the other ones you push the, push this in, this one has a little flipper that flips in to where the bobbin is. Now this one has a different way of starting it though. So if, since it has a touch screen, I'm going to go down here and as soon as I flip that little flipper in, look, there's a little thing that set, tells me to start. This is then my my um, my speed for winding my bobbins. Sometimes I don't like to wind my bobbins full speed. Okay, so I sometimes I turn it down, especially if I'm doing monofilament. I like to turn my bo my um, bobbin winder down so it doesn't go so fast. Um, when I'm doing regular thread, I usually have it on my on the fourth mark. I don't usually run it all the way up. So I'm going to hit start here, and it's going to wind my bobbin. And then when it's done, it's going to stop. So this one has a little flip that flips in to where the bobbin goes right here, okay? And then it comes up on the screen. As soon as you flip that in, this little the little start stop button comes up on my screen, okay? And I'm gonna hit stop now because I, I I think that's enough bobbin thread for right now, okay? So you can hit stop anytime you want on that. And then I'm gonna hit close. And if it had filled, the little thing would have flipped out and it would have stopped, okay? So this has got a little different bobbin wind around. So it's a little nice, a little nicer, it's a little fancier. Got some stuff on it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put the bobbin in. So these bobbins, I'm sorry, I think we're a little out of focus. There we go. Okay. So to put the bobbin in, it's going to go in the same way as we've done before. Take my little bobbin door off, and I'm going to make the letter P in front of me so that the tail of my thread's hanging off the left, and I'm just going to tip it sideways, and then I'm going to slide it into the bobbin case. Okay. And then I'm going to follow the little arrows 
around and cut it off at the end. I'm having a little trouble getting a hold of things today for some reason. There we go. Up and around and then cut it off. All right, just like the other machines. So most of the machines go in this way. There's a couple that have a different different method, but this one's most of these are the same. So we got our we got our bobbin in, and now let's thread the machine. So one of the big things that I love about this machine is the fact that it has the automated needle threader on it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna start out with we're gonna look at the we're gonna look at the threading path that is solid lines now instead of the um, the little um, curved lines, or I should say the little dashed lines, okay? So the dashed lines are one, you know, and then it went through here for the thread and then around here and over, okay? So now we're gonna follow this, this solid line for threading. So I'm gonna go under here, this little thing right here, one, two, okay, and then two's over here. We're going to go straight down for three and then back up for four. And then when you get up here, the foot needs to be up when you're up here. Because see, my foot's up. Okay. That means that the little door at the top of the machine here is open. And we talked about the little door before, too. So this little door. So if I put the foot down, see that little door shuts. And if you see that, that means you're not in the proper um, position for threading. So we need to have the door up or open and the foot up. So I'm gonna go ahead and swing that through there. There's a little lifter in there. You can easily see it. Go straight down for number five and then six. So it's come down. Okay, six is the little thread guide right here above the needle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and slide that into the little thread guide, number six. And then this one also has the, um, the automated needle threader, but this one has the button instead of the little lever over here on the left. So what I like to do when I get to this point, like when I get down to number six, I usually put my foot down just because it gives me a little tension up the top. And it's a little easier for me to get this across to the right place. So I'm going to go across this notch right here. Okay. There's a little notch in there. I'm just going to go across it. I'm going to push the thread into number seven, which is this gray piece right here. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the side and there's a cutter over here. It's about right here. And I'm just going to cut my thread off and let it droop. All right. And then instead of having to push the button down over here, we're going to come up here to the front of the machine and we're going to hit the threading button and it's going to thread the needle. Okay. Now I had already done this before I started the threading process, but before you thread your machine, okay, anytime you thread your machine, I'd already done this and I forgot to tell you. I always use my needle down, needle back up button before I try to thread my machine, especially if I've moved it or if I've, um, you know, and, and basically I just do it every time, um, especially if you've, if you've broken a needle, if you've changed a needle, it's very important to use this needle up and down button before you try to thread. And I'd already done that because I had just moved it back here and I did it right before I started the camera. Okay, so again, we're going to go across the notch to number seven. I'm going to cut it off on the side, and then I'm going to hit the button right here, and it threads the machine. So that's one of the cool things about these bigger machines. This is space is very nice. The, um, the two previous machines we did, um, the PS700 and then the VQ950, we're about nine and a quarter inches in here, and this one is 11 and a quarter. So this has got a lot of nice space in here. Okay, so it works very, very well for larger items, especially if you're quilting or if you're piecing larger items or you're sewing purses or whatever. So there's some nice space in here, okay? The other thing I wanted to tell you about, let's let's do that next, is we'll talk about the some of the accessories that come with this machine. So it comes with all your basic feet, just like the other ones had. You know, we talked about these a little bit with the other machines. You know, we've got our regular J foot that it comes with here, and it has the rolled hem foot, the, the decorative stitch foot, it's called the monogramming foot. Um, it has the overcasting foot, the zipper foot. The, we sewed a button on last time and the button, the little foot that sews the buttons on and then your buttonhole foot. Okay, so those are all like kind of standard feet. They come with most of the machines. Okay, so those are in, 
the little free arm here. And then the other feet, there's a lot of other nice stuff with this. So this machine comes with um, some extra quilting feet. So this is a nice quilting machine. So this one comes with a piecing foot. Okay, so this is the piecing foot. We've talked about this before. So this is the piecing foot with the guide. Okay. And it also comes with three different kinds of darning feet. In other words, free motioning feet. Okay, so this one comes with the, this is a echo foot. So it's kind of a little clear plastic one. And it has little lines on it that are a quarter of an inch apart. So you can echo around your work with this one. So that's one of the feet it comes with. It comes with the hopping foot. And this is the nice one with the open toe so you can see um, where you're going. Okay, so it comes with that foot. And then it also comes with, and I think I might put these on at the end and I'll show you the difference in these. So this one is a free motioning foot, but this one does not hop. This is a stationary one. And you have to have the, the free motion mode on the machine in order to use this foot because it does not hop up and down. And so I'll show you the difference in how you set them up. Um, Cause that's the one I think, one thing I wanted to show everybody was this. I don't have any batting with me today, but I'll be, still be able to show you a little bit, okay? So this is the, the, free mo uh, the three free motioning or darning feet. So it comes with those. Also comes with something that's nice for quilters is this, this um, straight stitch needle plate. Okay, it's a little different than the one I showed you last week because um, this one fits this machine instead. And then it also comes with a straight stitch foot. So those are all both extra feet that it comes with and an extra needle plate, okay? And most importantly, this machine comes with the dual feed. And this is a digital dual feed. Now this is a walking foot, okay? And the walking foot, and this is the new foot because it's slimmer. So if some of you have some of the embroidery machines, you may have one that's a little bit um, more square than this one. This one's very nice because it is a little bit slimmer and it goes over bumps. Like if you have like a, a fairly um, thick um, quilt that's behind and, and, and the, the square ones wanted to catch a little bit, this one's a little slimmer and it kind of tips up a little bit more. So this is a really cool walking foot. We're going to put this on too so you can see. Because you can actually adjust this on the machine. Okay. So unlike a regular walking foot that's just mechanical, this one has this little belt under here. And the belt can be adjusted how fast it rolls. So if it, you need it to roll faster or slower, you can adjust it. And I'll show you where you can do that on the machine. So that's something that's really cool with this, with this machine. Okay. This machine and the 3100 both have that. Okay. And then they give you not only the regular foot for that, because these come off just like the regular, the regular sewing feet do. So they give you the regular um, walking foot. Then they also give you two other feet that go on this and they and they didn't used to do that so they give you the stitch in the ditch foot so this one has like a little um little finger in the center that helps you stitch in the ditch and i did do some um uh, video on the, the digital dual feed um on shields live before so you could watch that video too and it gives gets into more detail with these feet but this is the stitch in the ditch foot and then it all, they also give you the open toe foot that goes on this digital dual feed. So there's three feet that come with the digital dual feed. So I thought that was really cool. They in, started including some extra feet too. All right, so those come with it. So I'm gonna put this over here and we're gonna use that in a minute. And then it also has this really nice large extension table. And I didn't put it on today because I was just gonna do some simple, some simple sewing, but this nice big extension table comes with this machine as well okay so it has really nice accessories okay so give me a second here so let's talk a little bit about some of the differences oh and i forgot this one also has bobbin a bobbin work case so if you want to learn how to do bobbin work where you put like ribbon or embroidery floss in your bobbin and then sew over it this it also comes with the bobbin work case i forgot about that all right, so that's some of the extra things that this one comes with. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are different about this machine. So when we look over here on the screen, we've got a touch screen again. And one thing that I love about this machine is I love the touch screen. I find pe most people find them very user friendly. You know, you're used to your phones and all that kind of stuff now. And everything is just like right on the screen. Okay. So this area that I'm in right now is called utility stitches. So these are kind of my basic utility stitches here. Okay. And I can go into the different tabs. So this is the main screen that comes up. I can also make it be my quilting screen. So let's say if I want my quilting stitches on it instead, I can have it come up and I'll show you that in the settings um, that I could have that come up on that quilting tab instead, okay? And then the other tabs, this is a standard tab with like your straight stitch, your zigzag, your stretch stitches, you know, your regular ones, overcasting. But then you also have more utility stitches on these tabs here. And then there's multiple pages. So you can go down to different pages on those, okay? And then this page here is all your different buttonholes. So this one has even more buttonholes and some darning stitches on it. And then it also, remember we used the, um, we sewed the button on, so it has that stitch on here too, okay? So that's in this set. But the other thing that this machine does is, you know, we talked about the other machine, um, yes, last week, 950, sewing sideways. So this tab, if I touch this, this machine sews frontwards, backwards, but it also also sews diagonally. And, and why that's cool is then, then it even has more decorative stitches that are large that you can use for larger items. So I thought I'd show you how it would sew diagonally by choosing, see, I can choose front and back. So here's like front, sideways, to the right, to the left. And then you can do zigzag sideways or back and front, but then the straight stitch will also go diagonally. So if I chose 501, it tells me, just like the other machine did, what foot to put on the machine. So I need the end foot. So I'm gonna grab my end foot out of here and put it on. And this then will sew sideways or diagonally. So that, that's why it's so cool because now I even have more options for stitch sizes. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop my needle and then this machine is gonna sew this direction up into the left. It'll also sew up into the right. So I'm gonna choose that when it's five, zero, three, and then it'll go this way. So that's something that this machine does that the other ones didn't. This one, this is the first one that has this other option for direction of sewing. Okay, so I think that's really cool. So we're gonna cut, because I wanna show you some of the decorative stitches. There's a lot of really big decorative stitches on here. Then of course, this is my this is my quilting tab down here. And we've talked about the quilting stitches, like our piecing stitch, we did that before. And then this one also has like your serpentine in here, some of your quilting stitches you might use for say, applique or even, um, I use some of them like for crazy quilting, like something for a decorative overlap, overlay. So those are in here. And then the other thing that this one has is, character stitches. So this one has tabs up here with all the different kind of stitches. So I can hit the character decorative stitch tab, click OK. So this one, since it has a touch screen, has this. Then all of these little tabs here have more decorative stitches in them. So if I touch this first tab, this one has 33 pages of other decorative stitches. So this has a lot of decorative stitches. So if I go down to some of these stitches, I was going to see if I could find one that did um, like did more some some of the, the, the diagonal sewing. Let's see here. I know there's a couple in here that are really neat. They're bigger and they're really neat. Let's see here. There's so many of them. And they're all so cool. But look how, look at, this one here is really pretty. Let's try that one. That's 6113. And again, it tells me to put my end foot on. So let's see what this one does. That's really pretty. 
but th that's what's neat when you have the decorative stitches and see how the machine kind of goes side to side and back and forth see how it's going sideways now the trick is with these keep things from dragging and keep it straight by looking at the bottom and let the machine do the work because it does a very good job of working so i just kind of try to keep the bottom of my fabric straight that's a pretty one what that one looks like that's pretty i like that one that one has the little curly cues in it isn't that pretty okay so this one just has tons of really neat decorative stitches in it and then this one here i've never done that one either that one looks cool and some of these are really large though so it's fun to go through let's see what one of these big ones looks like that's neat let's look at that one but that gives you a chance to to see What's, what's neat about having that diagonal function because then things can move side to side and the decorative stitches can be larger. So this one's a big one. It's like a, almost like a tulip and, oh my gosh, tulip and kind of like leaves. That's really pretty. See how it's moving diagonally and sideways? How pretty is that? That's really pretty. I don't think I've ever done this one. They, they added a whole bunch of um, decorative stitches to these machines in this last, um, the last time they rebranded it or kind of renamed it. And they added a whole bunch of really pretty um, stitches in it. So it has a lot more than it used to. All right, so let's take a look at, I think it's getting ready to do the last part of it. So we'll let it do it. So you can see a couple revolutions of it here. There we go. Okay, so let's see what that one looks like. So look at, oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. Really like that. So see, this one has some abilities that some of the other machines didn't have because it sews sideways and diagonally, okay? So let's see. So let's go back. I want to show you a couple of other things that I really like about this machine. I like... There's one thing that I use all the time, and I really like this little button here. And this little button is called the pivot function. So if you didn't see the BQ1350 um, uh, video that I did oh, about a year or so ago, and it's on still on the YouTube channel, and it's on um, the Facebook page, and it's it's the 1350. It has the that's the first one with the pivot, but this is the the, the next one with the pivot feature. I love the pivot. So if you just touch the pivot feature, all you do, it looks like a little foot with a, with a needle through it. You just touch it, okay? So then when I'm sewing, so I'm going to go ahead and remove my end foot over here and put my J foot on like that. Then when I'm stitching with this, I'm going to find some fabric here in a second. There we go, okay? So when you're, when you're sewing with this, and the pivot is on. And if you give me a second, I'm just going to plug my foot controller in so it's a little more obvious with the foot controller. So I'm going to sew along. Okay. And when I let up on the gas, it drops the needle and raises the foot. And I leave that on because if you're like chain piecing and you're putting different pieces of fabric in as you're going. Let me just get another piece of fabric as we're going. So that we get to the end of this seam, okay, and I stop. Then it allows me to push my fabric right up to the needle, and I don't have to worry that it's going to get garbled up or anything underneath because it's right up against the needle. So like when again, it, right up to the needle that I can put my fabric. And I love the pivot feature. I leave mine on all the time because it just is so handy when you're trying to adjust, but it always puts the needle down and raises your foot so you can adjust things. It's also good for going around corners then. So if you're doing, let's say you were making a garment and we need to come forward to our corner and turn the corner, then it also does that. We can just turn our corner then, see? So I love the pivot feature. So that this machine has that, okay? has the cutter, and we've used that on a couple of the other machines, so that's really awesome. Okay, now the other thing this machine has then is the ability to, and I'm not gonna go over everything, 
but I wanted to show you a couple of the things. So let's, let's go into the settings page for a minute. And I'm going to put on this walking foot because I want you to see the walking foot. And um, I'm going to go put that on, but I want to show you where you can, you can change things that happen with it. So in the settings, this machine has a little settings button as well down here at the bottom of the screen. If I were doing my straight stitching or my other stitches, this also will allow me to change my width of my stitch, my length here. Okay. And this is the first machine also with left, right shift. And what that means is it takes the entire stitch, not just the make, making it wider. It takes the whole stitch and moves it to the left or the right. So sometimes you need to do that depending on where you're using your foot to align what, what you're sewing. So this one also has left, right shift. So this is the first machine with that. Okay. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead and go to the settings. And something then you can do is once I get my foot adjusted or put on here, this is the dual feed adjustment right here. Okay. And right now it's grayed out because I don't have the foot on. All right. So that's why it's gray. I wanted to show it to you before I put the foot on so you knew why it was gray here. So let me just close this for a minute and let's put that foot on so you can see it. So this, this is a walking foot and it goes on the same way as the other walking feet do. It goes on with, um, it has its own shank right here on the machine. Okay. The other difference too with this machine, if you look at it, I'm going to grab a screwdriver here. Give me this second. Um, this is also a high shank machine instead of a low shank. And you'll see what I mean when I get this off here. Here we go. The, the little piece, the shank. Okay, that's called the shank is much taller than the other machines this one you know this one's quite a little bit taller it's a good half inch or so taller okay so this is a high shank machine so when i put this on you can see that the that the, that the shank is higher and you, all you have to do is put it on just like you do your other foot so i'm just going to slide this around hopefully you can see a little bit i'll see if i can get this down a little bit lower okay and it's going to go around the little post back here and this one doesn't have any little thing that goes around the like where the needle goes in because the, the the little mechanical ones go across here and they have a little thing we've we've put those on before so you've seen them so i'm just going to go ahead and tighten this up i love this digital dual feed so we're going to tighten it up okay like that okay whoops we're gonna have a we're gonna have a if I stick my arm near my camera, sometimes it likes to get blurry. There we go. Okay, so there's my foot. That's my standard one. But now can you see the little tail hanging back here? Okay, and I'm not gonna be able to show you this, but there's a little connector slot back here, right along the left top of the machine where that little go that little cord plugs in. So I'm gonna plug that in back here, hopefully. There we go. And that way the foot and the machine can talk to each other. Okay. So we're going to go look at this again. So now when we bring up the settings page right here, where it says dual, dual feed, feed adjustment. See now they're, now they're, they're white. So they're, they're active now. So if I were sewing along and I needed to increase the speed of the belt, because remember the little black belt that's on there. I would make this go faster, okay? But you might find that it's too fast and it needs to go slower. So if I go below zero, then it goes slower, okay? So in other words, let's, let's look at some fabric here and we'll just do this. So when we sew with this, we're gonna sew the same way and normally, I don't sew real fast with a walking foot, and I don't with this one either, because you want to give it the chance to work, okay? So what's happening, can you see the little belt? It, it's, it's pulling the fabric along, just like the little feed dogs do on the bottom of the mechanical foot. But this one I can adjust. So what happens sometimes is at the end of your seam, you may see that the top part of your fabric is pooped out past, is like extending past the, the bottom fabric. Well, if that's the case, then we probably then need to put our dual feed 
to run slower because the top is moving faster than the bottom is, okay? But the other thing that can happen is that the bottom is sticking out past the top. Well, then the top needs to be sped up and go faster to catch up with the bottom. Okay, so that's what's nice about this because we can actually adjust this. Now the regular walking feet, you they're just what they are. They both they have little walking feet on the top and you know your feed dogs are on the bottom. But this one we can make the top go faster. So like if your top doesn't line up on the if it's short on the top and the bottom sticking out, you need to make your top go faster, your top fabric go faster. So make this go faster. Okay. If the base is sticking out from the top, then that means the bottom is going is going is going uh, faster. So we need to we need to slow this down, or the top's going a little faster. So we need to slow this down a little bit, okay? So that it doesn't go so fast. So that is a huge thing, and I love this walking foot. And then when they redid it, they made it a little bit smaller. I, let me see if you can see back here. So when I have my foot down, you can see there's more clearance back here now for those thicker pieces of fabric that you might be using, okay? So that is something that really is nice to have now because the, the older walking feet were just a little bit thicker and sometimes they would catch a little bit if you had a real thick quilt or something you were working on, okay? Now you can use this also without being engaged so, the, so a lot of people ask me, what's the little gray lever on it? So this little gray lever back here, you can just pull it up like that. And then what it does is it makes the belt go up and then the belt is not engaged. So you can just sew without it if you don't want to take it off for a few minutes. And then when you go bit ready to use it again, you just reach back and put the little lever back down and it brings your, your little roller back in place. Do I piece with a walking foot? I do not, Betty. The, the reason I don't is these machines have such good feed systems on them that I really don't feel like I have to. I also find that it's a little harder for me to judge my quarter inch, uh, my quarter inch seam with a walking foot because the, there, there is a quarter inch line on here, yes, but I find it harder for me to focus on that line than I do on my J foot. So no, I do not use a walking foot when I piece. Some people like to, and I just, just never have. They do make a quarter inch piecing foot for this digital dual feed as well. So you can get that and it does have a guide on it. It's pretty accurate. It's a little bit, it's not, not full, but it's not a real, real scant. So they, but they do have one for the foot and it, it makes it easier because there's a guide to work with the walking foot. I've just never been a huge walking foot. With, I don't piece with it because these machines sell really well. They, they, they feed really well, I should say, okay? So this digital dual feed is like a huge thing because you can adjust it. It's the first, it's a walking foot you can adjust. You, you can make it go faster or slower depending on what your problem is or what you're working on, okay? So let's talk a little bit about free motion. And since this machine has several different um, feet with it, you use different stitches for these. So give me a second. I'm going to take this one off. So we're going to take this one back off again. And I'm just going to use a couple of these feet. And this is one of the machines that has what they call free motion mode. Okay. So um, the feet, the machines that have free motion mode on them, so I'm going to take this off right now. That's my pivot feature. I'm just going to turn it off for right now. This little button here that look, it's kind of blue and has like a little C on it and a little, this is a free motion mode button. And what it does, so if you look over here in my feed dogs, you know, when we free motion, the feed dogs need to be down. Okay, so these are up right now. I can feel them, okay? And most of the machines, you know, the, like the one I showed you last week, you went, you know, pulled your free arm off and there's a little, the little, the little lever in the back and you have to pull it down and put this back on. So this has it on the machine. So this one, I'm going to use this button right here 
and I'm going to touch this. And if you listen closely, you're going to hear the feed dogs go down. Did you hear the little click? So now my feed dogs are down over here. So it's right on the machine. And I think that's awesome. And if you look, I have the straight stitch on my utility tab chosen. And if you look now, it knows it's in free motion mode because this is blue. And it gave me the foot that I need to use for this particular free motion. So in other words, this one is the O foot, which is that open toe foot like this. And this is the one that hops up and down. So it's gonna hop, okay? So we're gonna put that one on for a minute. So you can see that one. And again, this was a high shank. So they have a special foot for this just for these machines because they have a the shank is in a different spot okay and this is going to be the straight stitch on my standard straight stitch okay i put my foot down okay and then we're going to start i'm going to do this i think i've got my foot controller hooked up now what i like to do again with my with my i like to kind of set it right around the center and then i just use my foot controller as a start stop button okay so I'm just gonna, I'm not good at this, but then you can see the difference in these stitches, okay? Okay, so this one's gonna hop up and down. And that's the difference in these modes. I don't have any batting, so I'm sorry, I forgot to bring the batting back today. All right, so this is the O foot, which is used with the straight stitch on the standard tab in free motion mode, okay? Now, if I want to do, I like to free motion with a different foot. There's another foot that comes with this machine that I really like, and that's this one. Okay. This one is stationary, though. This one does not hop up and down. But on this straight stitch, it's telling me that the O is the foot that I'm supposed to be using, which was the one that I have on right now that hops up and down. So if I take that one off, Okay, and put this one on, maybe, there we go. This one needs to be used with a different stitch because it will come up and this is the C foot, okay? So, and I, I remember this, I remember the reason I'm telling you this is I had a customer come in one day and we were having trouble. She was trying to use the C foot, which I was one I put on right here okay with the little hole in it. and i like this one too but she was having trouble with it because it seemed like it wouldn't um allow her to move her fabric freely and we couldn't figure out what was going on and all of a sudden it dawned on me that you needed to use a different stitch that's made for that foot so what we did is we went into the quilting tab okay and if i go to the q01 straight stitch in the center look there's the c foot and it and it changes the the height of your your presser foot and the pressure because this one does not jump up and down this foot is stationary and it just slides across the fabric so so you do have to change in this mode, when I have my feed dogs down, it will come up with the C. And that's why I, I have this other foot. So this one is cool. I like this one better. I do a little better with this. I'm not very good free motioner. But I do really like this one. Because it doesn't pound down on the fabric for me. Oops, sorry. I have my foot controller still hooked up. Okay. So see how I can more I can more freely move my fabric? because I'm not getting that pressure on my fabric. And this one works really well for me. And so this is one of the machines that can use this foot. Not all of the machines can because it needs to have this other mode for this particular foot. And I love this one because I can actually do a little free motioning. <laughs> I'm not very good, but I can do it. All right. All right, so there are the two, a couple of the free motion mo free motion feet that come with the machine. Those are some of the special ones that come with it, okay? Then when we want to um, exit this mode, 
I'm going to hit the button. And I'm looking over and I'm thinking, my feed dogs didn't come up. What happened? Well, the same thing as the other machines, I am going to go ahead and remove this foot. So give me a second here. Kind of watching our time. And I'm going to go ahead and put my shank back on wherever I put it. I have a lot of feet here. Oh, here it is. Okay, we're going to put this back on. Okay, I'm going to use my needle down and needle back up again button because I'm ready to thread my machine again. Okay, and I'm going to hit the button right up here to thread my machine. Well, I noticed that after I did my needle up and down, oh, look, the feed dogs are up now. So remember, after you remove the machine from the free motioning mode, because you probably heard it go click and click the, the feed dogs down. When you release that, you need to come over here and use the needle down, needle up button, and it will raise your feed dogs. Okay, and that's the same with all the other machines. Once you replace the little button that was in the back, okay, you need to, to turn either turn your hand wheel one revolution towards you, or I usually just use the needle up and down button to do that. And then it will raise your feed dogs again. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about that because they, oh, my feed dogs won't raise. And that's why, because you just need to tell them it's time to come back up again. All right. All right, let's see what else is on here that's kind of neat. I love the pivot feature. Oh, and the other thing I really, really love about this, um, a lot of my stitches, I have certain lengths or widths that I use. And I like to save them in the machine. So like right now, this piecing stitch is set for 2.0, which is a very, very short stitch. And I make lots of mistakes, so I have to kind of, tear out a lot. So I like to leave mine at 2.5, but I don't want to have to touch that every time. So this machine allows me to save like a couple of the other ones we've seen. And it's a little, this little, um, it looks like a little pocket. So I'm just going to touch that little pocket and I'm going to hit memory. So it's going to save it. But what's cool about this machine, if I hit the word retrieve, I can actually save five different settings for each stitch in here. So if I have five different things that I use on that straight stitch, five different settings, I can set that up. So every time I don't have to, re I can just retrieve the one I want. So in this case, this is the one I use the most. It's on the top, okay? I often do that with my zigzag as well. So like if I'm on my regular tab here, if I can get it to go, sorry, my fingers don't always go on the screen. And um, I use this zigzag um, like 1-09 quite often. I can do my pocket. I can change it to what I like this one. This is the standard one that I use quite often. Okay. The other one I use with this is I like to use um, a, a setting for my, um, for my binding. So I use 2.0, so I can save that one on there, okay? And then I also use one for my rugs. So I use one that's like 3 point or 4.5, I think it's 4.5, and then I use the same length. So then I could save that one in here too. And when I choose the stitch, I can retrieve it. And now I've got the two in there. So it's like, oh, well, I have to do my binding today. So I'm going to choose number one. That's the one I want to use. And I'm going to hit retrieve. And then it comes up with those settings that I chose. Okay. So this machine has more saving ability yet because it's more, it has more of a memory in it. And you can add things like that. I use that all the time. And so I do have several of my stitches that I've chosen maybe three or four or five different settings. And you can always delete one and put a new one in if you want. But it's nice to have that ability to do that on almost every stitch in here. So that's that's another thing about this machine that I really love. Other than the, the size of it, this is a very quiet, strong machine. I find that I, I go through a lot of, I do a lot of variety of fabrics and I just really feel this machine sews 
super well and feeds super well. So I just wanted, this is one I've been wanting to show you. I am going to show you the 3100 so I can also show you the, um, so I can show you the laser light technology. So we'll do that later. We just didn't happen to get one in. They were on back order. So um, this one is the same machine without the laser light in it. So, okay. So let, I think, I think, does anybody have any questions? This is such a cool machine and this is one of my favorites. The second here, I'm gonna go up and get the camera here so I can say goodbye to everybody. Get the microphone. All right. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us for Shields Live today and the BQ 2500. Hope you enjoyed seeing about that. It is a really neat machine. Um, we Next week, we will have a week off of Shields Live. We're going to be having a retreat here that week. And then in the month of June, we're going to have quilting month. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do, but we're going to do some quilting with the embroidery machine. I think we're going to do some quilting with the walking foot. Um, and maybe the, a little bit of free motioning, doing some setup and that kind of thing. And then um, a couple ways in the in, embroidery machine. So that'll be the month of June. So it'll be quilting month for the month of June. Okay. So we won't, we won't have class next uh, Thursday, but we will have, it'll be the first Thursday in June will be the next class. Okay. Next week is the, is the retreat here. So, all right. So thanks everybody. Have a great day and we'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thanks everybody.